Danny Flexen here for seconds out with former English light heavyweight champion Liam Conroy. Liam, we're on the eve, well not the eve, that's technically wrong. We're three days away, two days away, I'll get it right eventually, we'll cut all that out. Um, yeah, two days away from the MTK Golden Contract quarterfinals. Um, you've got Andre Sterling, of course. When you were there for the draw, Stephen Ward, who's your big rival, of course, got to pick quite early on. Did you think he was going to pick you? I wasn't sure. Like <coughs> Before the draw, I didn't think he would choose me. But we actually got on all right, so like we're all right with each other. So it probably would be better to meet each other in the final anyway. Like I'd like to see him do well in the tournament. So, but um, yeah, when when he was making his pick, he kind of had a glance round and he I caught eyes with him and it kind of took me by surprise. I was like, he's gonna pick me, and I was like, what the hell? But then uh, then he, he he went for the for the Latvian kid. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, it surprised me. I wasn't sure. I just have no idea what people are thinking, do you? I thought, I thought, it, might, I thought it might surprise everyone here and choose me, but it never. What do you make of Sterling? Obviously, that's who you've got now. It seems like a, a kind of rough, bag of tricks, awkward fighter as well. Coming off a defeat, but, but kind of creditable defeat anyway. So what, what do you make of him? Yeah, he's coming off a loss, but Craig Richards is a quality opponent too. And um, from what I've seen of him, he's... His, his game has that the both fights I've seen him and he's come off the floor and won one on points and lost one on points so he's obviously game and he looks like he makes it really hard in there for people kind of thing and I've, I've had fights like that in the past and I'm just looking forward to it I think we're both a similar level and um, I think it makes I think it's a good 50-50 fight I'm going to have to stay really sharp to beat him A lot of people have touted your fight with Stephen Walder's fight of the year for 2019 how much of a consolation, if any, is that for the fact that you didn't get the win on the night? Does that make up for it a little bit? It, it did a little bit. It would have felt nicer if I'd won and been in fight of the year, but it did make make it a little bit better. But like I say, we, we get on all right. Like it, we sat and had a crack yesterday and got a selfie to send to our missus and stuff. So uh, it was good to share that with him after I'd done all the sparring with him and stuff. It was good to share a night like that with him. But um, I'm sure it'll happen again one day. It might happen in the final, so... That would be good. How hard was it the way you lost the fight? Because it was only by one point in all three cards. Obviously, a technical decision ended early because of the cut. Who knows what would have happened if it had gone on. But does that make it harder to take the way it ended? No, because I put myself, I put the blame to myself for how I fought, really. I tired out and I think he was busy in the middle rounds. And I think he, he did enough to win. And that, that was just how it played out. But... It, it was a shame looking back that it was stopped prematurely. Like if it if we finished the fight, it might have been different. I was, I think I was starting to get a bit of a second second win, but I would never know. I will never know unless we box again. So if we box again, it might be a total different fight altogether. So I don't know. But yeah, it was a little bit of a consolation, but not really. I, I wanted to have that title and I wanted to um, have that win, but we've both ended up in the same tournament anyway. So it hasn't made too much difference in my career either. Way. For a fighter like you at your level, looking to be active, looking to learn from every fight, how important is it that something like the Golden Contracts come along? Oh, it's massive, Like especially after the year I've had. I've had um, two losses, big high-profile losses this year. I won one against Elvis Dubé in between, but I'm just, just dead fortunate that MTK keep getting me these opportunities and I feel like I'm progressing with every fight and I'm getting better every fight and I'm not I'm not here to try and claim that I can beat everyone and have an unbeaten record but I'm here to test myself against the best and then um, this is a quality tournament like everyone is around a similar level in this tournament and I'm this is the level I've been operating at for a couple of years now so yeah I'm just dead, dead fortunate to be in here and I'm I think it's a great tournament. And just before I let you go, you obviously fought Joshua Buatzi, you've shared a ring with him. Looking at the latest IBF ratings, he's not a million miles away from a world title shot. Unfortunately for him, maybe, it's against Artur Paterbiev, who's a fearsome <laughs> operator. From what you know of him and having shared a ring with Buatzi, how close do you feel he is to that kind of top world level now? I think it's just timing with him. I, think he will, I don't think he can put a limit on Josh Buatzi. I think he will go... A very long way. How long that is before he is ready for beat to be I, I wouldn't know from what from what I can see. He's very good right now, but beat to be just looks like a bit of a special beast. So it might might be a few years before Josh Boatsy takes that, a fight like that. But but like I say, I wouldn't like to put a ceiling on him because I think he's just progressing every fight, and I'd like to see him in them fights, and I'd like to see him do well as well.
And what about your progress? Because obviously you were, you were desperate to win that British title. But should you come through this tournament, beat three quality operators to do so, would you then consider yourself beyond the domestic belt? No, that British title is just like, like I said before, the Boatsy fight, that's the pinnacle to me. It was, it was a stepping stone to win, but that is just what I've wanted since I was a kid, so I'd be happy to return and box for that uh, if I won this tournament kind of thing. But I think this, everyone in this tournament's around British level anyway, so I think this is a good good play tournament to see who comes out on top and see who's up towards them British. Whoever, whoever wins this tournament, I'd say, if it's one of the British lads, I'd say they were probably at the top of the pile in Britain, like it's Craig Richards and Shaq and Peter's boxing for the British now. So I think anyone that wins this tournament, if they're from Britain, will be ready for them. Of course, we found out yesterday Mick Hennessy had won, or Hennessy Sports had won the purse bids for Craig Richards and Shaq and Peter's for that vacant Lonsdale belt. How do you see that one going? It's a tricky one, I think, the both both quality quality boxers that tidy operators um, I, I couldn't pick a winner I don't know on either of them well enough I've only seen a little bit of Craig Richards and a little bit of Shaq and Pitters as well but um, they've both probably boxed at a similar level even though Richards is a bit more experienced I'm, I'm just looking forward to watching it to be honest I watch all the boxing I'm a big boxing fan and stuff and I'm looking forward to watching it and hopefully one day whichever one was the British I might get a chance to share the ring with them too and just finally, for people that want to know a bit more about you, how can they find you on social media? Um, it's Liam Conroy 92 on Twitter and Instagram, and it's Liam Conroy on Facebook. Brilliant. Well, we wish you the very best of luck on Saturday night. We look forward to watching it. Thanks very much. Cheers, mate.